All right, we got a big day today. We're gonna plant some garlic. We're gonna harvest some potatoes, harvest some Jerusalem artichokes, and we're gonna dig up some stool layered has caps. Let's go. So a bit of a sad time of the year. Everything's winding up. The weather's getting nice though. Um, I like to show you guys failures also as well as successes. This here was going to be my pumpkin patch on the uh, compost swale. So there's a swale here with a berm and I run my compost here so that when it rains the compost leachate goes into the swale and then feeds all the fruit trees on the swale. Well I thought this would be a great place for pumpkins to just crawl and fill everything up and it was and the pumpkins did well and they filled in all the space but because it doesn't get very much sun it's november 2nd i believe and the pumpkins are still green so they didn't get enough sun to ripen up and we never got to sell any pumpkins so we'll have to um do a big uh, pumpkin pie or something like that so it's kind of beautiful time of the year with uh, plants dropping their leaves but it's sad that we're going into the cold season and my Christmas time's almost done. Okay, let's talk about Jerusalem artichokes. Okay, so here we are on the, um, the bed that I'm transitioning into a fungal dominated bed, but for now it's bacterial dominated. This was wood chipped. Uh, sorry, this was sheet mulched. So cardboard, cardboard compost, manure, and then shredded leaves on top. Um, that happened last fall. I planted um, just some herbs and stuff like that. Herbs, Jerusalem artichokes. We have some mulberry, some tree species planted on the perimeter. And then I planted some Jerusalem artichokes and look what happened. Jerusalem artichokes said this is my spot and went nuts. So this is what, this is the time that you want to harvest your Jerusalem artichokes. The leaves are starting to die, turn yellow. The stalks are still nice and hard though. And I'll show you why that's handy when I'm harvesting them. Um, they're starting to tilt over and fall over. We had a huge windstorm. I'm sure lots of people did. Um, kind of came in, blew these down. So this is when you want to harvest them. Beautiful crop. So much growth. These are the tools you're going to want to use. Um, not a shovel because you don't want to pierce them or puncture them and um, very little forking actually goes on you can depending on your soil you can use bare hands I'll probably be able to use bare hands on this bed um, and then you can get some loppers if you want I don't typically like to put them in the ground so you can get some loppers if you want um, just to lop off some of the bigger tree trunks or uh, uh, trunks are like tree trunk size Let's see if I can find some big boys you know, like, that's a big trunk. So, being able to lop that off is really nice. And then you can yank on a stub. It's a lot easier to pull it up. So let's get pulling these up and I'll show you. Man, if you are in a zone that you can grow these in and you're not growing these, what are you doing? Change that, remedy that. Jerusalem artichokes, find them, buy them. Food for life, zero work. Okay, so why are we even growing Jerusalem artichokes? Um, they basically replace a spot of a carbohydrate on your plate, potato, sweet potato. Um, the difference between Jerusalem artichokes and potatoes, firstly, is obviously that they're perennial. So you have a crop that you can plant once and basically not do anything again and have food for life. That's really um, a good thing. Uh, second thing is that they're in the sunflower family um, not in like the artichoke family. So uh, they actually make these giant six feet tall flowers that are really ornamental. They're also great pollinator attractors and um, deer love them. They're like deer crack. So uh, you can plant these and the deer will come and eat the flowers and leave the tuber under the ground and you get food, deer gets food and the deer doesn't eat your trees. That's nice. Uh, the second thing is they store their energy in what's called inulin instead of starch. So your body actually can't process inulin. So it goes into your stomach and your body doesn't digest it. So it's a lot lower calorie food than potatoes. But it's still at the same time very nutrient dense. So you can do like Google up nutritional comparison of Jerusalem artichokes versus potatoes and you'll see Jerusalem artichokes just win straight across the board. And they're healthier. 
Now, just a warning with that. Uh, you can't digest inulin, but the bacteria in your gut can. And when they do, they make a bunch of methane. Um, so they're also, you know, lovingly known as Jerusalem fartichokes. So um, if you don't want to have those issues, then um, what you want to do is boil them for about uh, eight minutes or so, and that will help break apart the inulin in the pot, and then it doesn't get in your body, and then it doesn't um, give you any kind of uh, digestion problems, and your guests will thank you. Um, they store really well. So you can store them like nature does, um, in the garage in a bin covered in soil and they store for about a year um, basically the same as potatoes a little bit longer than potatoes I think um, and they're very prolific these things grow with zero maintenance and they will just expand 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 when you harvest them you'll never get every nub out so um, you really do you plant them once and you will never ever ever go hungry again because you will have so many Jerusalem and artichokes that you can't stand it. Uh, you're going to actually have a problem trying to figure out how to eat it all. Uh, the last thing is, is how do they taste? Like, are they any good? They taste exactly like a potato. So you actually almost won't be able to tell the difference between a Jerusalem artichoke and a potato. You cook them the same way as a potato, except you do have to boil them first to get the inulin, to break apart the inulin. But even if you boil them um, and then chop them up and fry them they still end up pretty crispy like a home fry so they're very good they're good done like home fries they're done like roasted potatoes they're good done like mashed potatoes they're exactly the same they taste like potatoes um, except they're healthier they have more nutrition they're easier to plant easier to maintain uh, easier to harvest you know it just and they're better for the you know the wildlife they're great pollinator attractors and everything that I'd said before Amazing crop. If you can grow these and you're not growing them, fix that because these are as easy as it gets and they're beautiful plants as well. Jerusalem artichokes. I absolutely love them. One of my favorite things that I started planting since I got here. So that's why you're planting them. Now let's go dig them up. So let's cut into this patch here and we'll clear it up and then we'll pull out some of the big boys. All right, so we found two main stems here, one here, one here, pretty big guys. They fell over in a rainstorm. I also did find this. So I did plant a goji berry in here somewhere. Uh, I don't see them. So this is maybe the other hazard for doing these. You can see some of the roots already. This some of the hazards for doing this is, uh, you know, they, they're so prolific that they will just kind of take over and smother everything else out. Let's see if we can... Okay, so I can feel these are breaking all over the place. But I want to show you just how prolific these things are. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, they're prolific. And half of them are still on the ground. That is what like you ever see a potato like that huge and this thing is loaded with them just absolutely loaded huge okay let's pull up another guy all right pull up this guy this is why i don't like to necessarily fork in first even if you try to fork in underneath it because um you're just gonna spear all these things. You know, they're really, really deep. This one had fallen over, so it's probably not as good. Still loaded. Look at this thing. You ever see a potato like that? It's huge. Look at that. These all break off in the ground, so like you'll never get them all. You'll always have a little root fragment. And something as small as one of these nubs Something as small as that will make a whole new plant. So, you know, I'll always put some more in there. You know, covered in worms. This is, look at this, look at all these worms. You wanna see sign of healthy soil? That is beautiful. All right, let's get pulling some of these out. So much food. Okay, so this is just one plant. So 
You want to talk about soil stability? Look at the root system on these puppies. Um, the other really nice thing about these is that because they're so hardy and they don't really get attacked by diseases, most species, you actually want to go compost this, so you can if you want. Um, the other thing you can do is you can just, honestly, you can just leave it on the ground. You can kind of bury the roots back under some soil. So you can just kind of bury some roots under the soil, chop off the big part. This big part's going to take a while to break down. Um, but you can leave most of this just there. This is the stalks from this one plant. So you can see lots of organic matter to compost down. Great compost fodder. Great soil cover for over the winter time. If you wanted to shade your soil, use it as a mulch. Nothing wrong with that as well. Um, but that is a ton of root mass. That is a ton of organic matter and soil for the food soil web. And for soil stability, holding soils together on the top of mountaintops. I got some hockey tape or something. For old soils together, um, these are great. You know, look, think of you know all these roots adding up their tensile strength, holding soils together. Um, if you haven't seen that video, you know, two sand particles falling apart, the only thing holding them together is the roots. Um, one last thing is you always want to see like there's there's root fragments in here still, so you always want to go around and dig. And what I do is save the small nubs that are going to be a bit of a pain in the butt to cook with and I plant these so you know these will go down in the bottom of hillsides for deer food um, this one's okay to cook that one's pretty big so I'll save a little pile of these to plant um, try to kind of cover them up with sun or from the sun and then you want to go in and you want to try to dig out like look huge root fragment so you want to dig around and see if you can pull out any other because the way that you pull it up you'll never get them all so you'll never get them all there's tons in here like huge that's tons you're always going to leave something like that and even if it's just you know I'll just take a bit from this other plant you know that's one plant just to show you this is the other plant that I still haven't dug up but even if even if you left sorry for swinging the camera around even if you just left a nub like this in the ground and you will never get all those this is going to be a, a whole bed of plants you know this will turn into tons of plants four or five plants by the time it goes up and grows and then the rhizomes spread out make new nodules, make new plants from those nodules. I planted um, not too many, maybe like 10 plants along this whole bed. Uh, and I just did what you should never try to do, try ne never to do what I just did. So I'm gonna use this as a planting piece. So never try to rip it off, try not to rip it off, I guess is a better way to say it. Because it'll rot, it won't store as well from here. So I'm actually gonna break this into pieces and then I'll go plant this. Either that or I'll eat it tonight. But I might go plant that one. So one plant. Um, I want to say 10 pounds. 10 pounds of tubers from one plant. One. One little plant. One stalk. So you know, I've got a ton in here. Let's go dig them up. I mean, I'm not going to film myself digging all these up. There's going to be an afternoon to dig this whole bed up. But that's a lot of food. These things are prolific as all get up. Tons of organic material. So one last thing, because you know it's putting out all this organic material, it's taking that out of the soil. So make sure that you're always putting back. Make sure you're always putting back into the soil. So something like this is probably an extremely heavy feeder. So you want to be top dressing with compost if you can. Always putting more and more um, wood chips down on top. Wood chips are very, very energy dense. It takes a long time to break down, like a full season or more, but they're very, very energy dense. So wood chips on top of the ground is a great idea, even though you're disturbing the soil a bit when you pull these up. If you're concerned about not disturbing the soil, let's just see what happens if you just pull them out. Okay, so I'm really big on no-till. Um, I'm really big on not disturbing your soil food web of life. 
think that is a goji. Yeah, I have goji's planted here too. Oh boy. Okay, so let's just say that you just want to yank these up and you don't want to disturb the soil life. We'll just rip some branches off of this guy. Look at these already. Just to make it easier. And we'll just say for this one, we're going to get what we get. And we're going to leave the rest in the ground. I mean, that is a lot of soil disturbance anyways. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Look at this. Look at how much food this is. So then I guess you could just say, I don't want to disturb the soil any more than that, even though it's a pretty big disturbance. I'm really sorry if I'm shaking the camera around. This would be easier to do with an assistant. So look at how much. Try to get the big nubs off. You know, and even long roots like this, like this will grow into a plant. This thing here is just a swollen root. That'll grow into a plant. Even this, you want to divide this up a bunch of times, that'll grow into plants. So you will never, ever, ever get these out of wherever you plant. So just be aware of that. You can always starve them out by mowing as the little shoots pop up. That's how you kill anything, is you just keep making it grow with its root system and then cutting its energy supply off by cutting the parts that grow. I'm just draining it of energy. There's some big guys in there. Try to get those out. Get this hiding. How does that even hide? It's huge. Okay, so say now you don't want to go digging around for all the roots. You can do a cursory look just on the top surface looking for anything. If you don't find it, you say, okay, I don't want to disturb the soil any more than that. Like, oh, look at that. I just found that. Huge. Okay, so, don't have a banana for scale, but I'll tell you, that is a ton of food. You know, hand for scale. And that's like kind of, you know, one layer, two layers deep in some spots. That's a ton of food off one plant. So, you don't have to get every yield out these. That's totally cool. Look at that yield. And pretty easy. You know, I'm not sitting there digging and spading away. I'm just pulling a plant up. God, I love these things. Jerusalem artichokes. Okay, so harvesting some of these, I found a mulberry tree. So, you see the leaves on the Jerusalem artichokes. There's no serrations. So I ran across these here. They kind of just fade into everything. But uh, this is mulberry here. And actually if you trace that stem back, you can see it attaches here. Right there. 
So this is mulberry here. It was trying to exist in Jerusalem artichokes, and look what it did. It put out a ton of growth. Look at this. Huge. So it's going dormant now, but I don't want to dig that guy up. So this thing did really well, surrounded by and absolutely smothered by Jerusalem artichokes. So this is in a wilder planting. Um, you know, this upper swale isn't the deer pressure point. It's the second swale down. That's the deer pressure point. And there's Jerusalem artichokes down in the valley there. But I think Jerusalem artichokes are fine surrounded by trees, provided they can get established. Now this tree kind of put out a lot of leggy growth. This is a really shady spot, shadier than I'd like. So it's really trying to reach for the sun. It's trying to get out of the Jerusalem artichokes, but that tree would be fine. And because it's green growth, what I can actually do after I remove the Jerusalem artichokes is I'm gonna stake this. And this will actually get up and shoot up above the Jerusalem artichokes next year, but it'll be hidden amongst them. So Jerusalem artichokes is a companion plant. Great stuff. This mulberry was six inches tall when I put it in the ground and it survived amongst Jerusalem artichokes crazy let's talk about how the artichokes spread now okay so here we have an interesting plant where the plant actually got pushed over fairly early in the season and it got pushed over because the soil is pretty soft it was just kind of loose manure and and shredded leaves you know uh, on top so it's fairly loose soil and this plant is very sturdy and tall it fell over um, early on and went across and of course you'll see this a lot when trees fall near riverbeds um, is the tree will fall over and then there'll be you know a bunch of vertical ri rising shoots so all of these vertical rising shoots here came up off the Jerusalem artichoke and what the Jerusalem artichoke also did is it rooted it rooted where it touched the ground so it rooted where it touched the ground and then it sent out these lateral sideways shoots so here's just some tubers, but it sent out these lateral sideways runners. Here's one here, and here's one here. So it sends out these lateral runners, and then there'll be little, little nodules and nodes. And over here, this one here was actually attached to this. So then it'll send up a sideways shoot. So it'll send out lateral runners, and then sideways. So these are how they spread rhizomely. So this will spread, for example, out into your lawn. So wherever you don't want them continuing to grow, you're going to have to mow it so that when they're just tiny little babies like this, like even smaller than this, you're just mowing over them. You'll never even know that they're in your lawn, um, but there certainly will be in your lawn unless you like put a rhizome blocker around your lawn. So this here was a Jerusalem artichoke that fell spread rhizomely and still put on a huge heavy set of tubers so tons of food there too even though it fell and put a lot of energy into growing sideways and growing new stalks up other plants this is the one that was actually growing over the mulberry tree so a very healthy plant lots of food still bins filling up this is bin number two so tons and tons of food. These things are nuts, but they will spread rhizomely sideways. So make sure that you plant them where you want them forever and where it's okay to, to spread because you've either buried them off, blocked them off, put them in a raised bed, or you're gonna mow next to them because these will spread all over the place. Healthy plant. I think we can do a lot worse than having food spreading at will. And this is below ground food for us, for the worms. You can see my soil is just absolutely covered in worms and they were eating some of these. Um, and also food, the flower heads for the deer and they'll take some of these down right down to the ground when they get them. The patch down lower in um, doesn't typically even get this high because the deer just munched them. But great, great, great crop. Okay, so now that we picked them, we're gonna store them. Here's how I store them. Um, I always believe in storing things the way that nature does. So what we're going to do is take some of the compost from the swales. 
Um, we're going to line it in the bottom of a big bin, not thick, just enough that they're not sitting on top of, uh, uh, so that they're sitting on top of soil. And then we're just going to layer them. So here's a bin from a few of them. We're just going to layer them in there. And we're just going to try to get them so that they're kind of not touching each other. You know, it's not the end of the world if they touch. So we're just going to do that. And then we're going to put some more on top. All right, so we've got the whole layer done. Now what we're going to do is just take some more of this compost. And we're just going to kind of fill them about to there just so that they're barely covered and then we'll give it a little shake just to fill in all the spaces okay so they're mostly covered uh, it doesn't have to be perfect and we're just going to see if we do this with two hands but we're just going to give it a shake fill those spaces back down we'll top those up and then we'll do another layer and we'll just keep doing that okay so that's uh one about 15 by four foot strip of Jerusalem artichokes filling a tub and there's compost in there but there's really not that much it's really just artichokes on top of artichokes and this thing is heavy oh, okay so now we're going to store it in a cool dry place I pick right here just my gardening bench. Okay, so I saved a bunch of small ones to plant. Tiny little ones. So we're gonna plant these. We're gonna plant these in places where we want a nice big tall wall so that it kind of feels like you're walking down a corridor. Um, and then I'm also gonna plant them at the front of the house for an ornamental, nice looking um, vis visual barrier from the road. But first, we're gonna pop up. And grab a snack. Look at this thing, it's loaded. Look at that, just food hanging on trees. Wonderful. This tree put out tons of tiny little apples. We got to our crab apples, pruned it, gave it a good, nice prune. I love the size of these, loaded. The surprising thing is the taste improved. These are super sweet now. They were sour, bitter little crab apples that we fed to the dogs, gave them some dog food but man the taste really improved super sweet we're in a wilder spot here um, Jerusalem artichokes planted out here as well um, and every single apple gets planted you never waste Did he chase something into the rocks? These are the rocks for the pond that we're putting up. Eco pond. Hopefully this year. She's funny though. She plays right on them. Jumps up all on top of them. So here's the front road. The uh, free food veggie stand. <laughs> Pretty high tech, eh? So I'm going to take a tidbit from Sean over at Edible Acres and I'm going to try to do a bit of a living wall here. So we're going to put Jerusalem artichokes and we're going to plant these guys all right along the front. I mow here. This is going to be a food forest and I mow there. So worst case, this whole bed becomes a giant perennial sunflower bed, which isn't too bad. So it started hailing on me. Um, but did get the rest done. So three full bins, like massive moving totes full of Jerusalem artichokes. All the scraps, 
chopped and dropped on top of the beds. They'll just rot down over the winter. And then I planted a ton. I've got some more to plant here. And then I've got my garlic to plant as well. So keep on going. All right, so wife just got home. Um, I have to run off to hockey now. I have to do something with these, so I have a whole nother bin. And then we got two bins here. So two full bins. Let's knock it down. Two full bins. And then I gotta fill another one for hockey. And I can get about I can get about one recycling bin uh, full of Jerusalem artichokes in one of those bins. So I gotta figure out one more. And then I should have Jerusalem artichokes for a long time. I'll be giving some of these away. And then I gotta eat all these squash. And then sack of garlic. Yeah, crazy abundance. Thanks for watching. This video was way longer than I wanted. Um, but hopefully, if you stayed around this long, you picked something up. If, uh, if you have any um, comments or concerns um, that you want to voice, uh, if you have any questions you want me to answer, just leave a comment uh, down below. I love reading all your guys' comments. It makes me uh, driven to keep doing these videos because I know it helps people. Uh, I'm no wizard or anything like that. You know, I'm just a dude who's planting some food and uh, came across a nice way to plant using nature. Um, so you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So just keep on and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. See you next time.